Okay, so the theory is pretty simple, really. When you click the XE, the game actually starts. It creates um, a game instance, and you can create a custom game instance. Uh, and that's going to persist throughout the whole time that the executable is loaded. It then looks for the default level, and if you remember, it was um, set in that uh, maps thing from the project settings. Um, so we'll set that in a minute. Uh, it, it loads the default level, which then loads its own game mode. So you can set a custom game mode for the level. And the game mode loads a bunch of um, default objects for that game mode. So you can override the game mode and override these default objects if you need to. So at some point during gameplay, uh, something in the game will cause a win condition or it'll cause a map change condition, and something will call open level. Now what that open level does is essentially destroys everything that was already in the existing level and starts the next level loading. So again, that level loads, it loads its game mode, that game mode loads its own custom objects. So you can probably see that at any point in this cycle, whenever something calls open level, all of this stuff is essentially transient. All of this stuff can be, um, oh, you know, changed because you call a new level. So how do you store data that handles uh, between levels and that's where we come back to the game instance so the game instance is a thing that's constantly there and we can store data in that game instance and that's going to be important for getting the menu flow stuff right so what we're going to do is we're going to start the game from a main menu level and it means that basically we're going to start the game with an empty level just showing the main menu user interface and that main menu user interface can then load any other sort of game levels. So we can have multiple game levels, and the main menu will always have the choice to spawn those other levels, and then those levels will return back to the main menu. So that'll be the sort of menu cycle. Uh, and it's important to remember that all of this stuff can go away. So if we want to store something, it's if we want to store something between this cycle it's all got to go into the game instance class. So the game instance overall controls the overall state of the game. I want to sort of have us connect our user interface, whatever we're showing, by something that's inside the game instance that tells us where we are. And, and that's important when you're getting to a more complex situation where you've got lots of game user interface stuff, is that you have to have something that controls the state of the user interface. Um, from my experience, it's, it's really quite bad if you don't set this kind of thing up. Uh, the next part of it is that, obviously, if the levels can destroy other levels and there's no persistence between them, then we need to store any data that needs to be passed between the levels or between the menus um, in this game instance class, in this blueprint. Um, so I'm doing this by preference, but you don't need to, but essentially I'm going to have the game instance have handle level changing, how handle the level loading itself. And I'm doing that because there's one part where we've got a problem in that if you imagine you, you're loading a level, when you call open level, what it actually does is destroys the existing one. Well, the, the existing one might have the user interface for um, the main menu, say, and it's going to go into the game one. Well, what, what user interface do we show in the meantime? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to store the user interface for the loading screen inside the game instance class. So our plan of action now should be um, roughly in this order. We're going to set up the enum for a state. So we're going to have like state, whether it's in game, whether it's loading, whether it's um, in the main menu. We're going to create a custom game instance and add the state handling for the, that in the in the game instance blueprint. We're going to load the um, the loading screen UI. We're going to set that up in the 
Game Instance Blueprint, and we're going to actually put in a couple of events that the menus can use to, for choosing levels and that kind of thing, and exiting back to the main menu. Uh, then we're going to hook up the main menu UI to these events we've just added to the Game Instance Blueprint. We're going to hook up the win-lose conditions in our main game level um, to the same events in Game Instance. Um, we're going to make sure that the UI is displayed properly when we go over those triggers that we created. And then we're going to um, make sure that when we do actually do the win-lose thing, that we've got some way of returning back to the main menu. And then we can obviously go through that cycle again in the end as many times as we like. So we've got the menu flow, or we should have the menu flow fixed by then. Okay, so let's get back to it.